This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Protect your web browsing on your laptop, smartphone, tablet, and more by visiting nordvpn.com forward slash power reviews and signing up to a two-year plan with 70% off. In Europe, we don't really pay much attention to treadwear, but thanks to a much larger racing scene in North America, it's a much bigger thing here. To find out exactly what difference a high or low treadwear rating actually makes on track, I've rounded up five popular tires that often get used on track from treadwear rating 300 all the way down to 100. And I'm gonna to test to see if a lower treadwear really does mean more grip. On test, I have two of the favorites from Michelin, which is the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S and the more track biased Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2. The 4S has a treadwear rating of 300 and the Cup 2 180, so already we've got quite a big spread. I've then got two of the latest and greatest rivals from Goodyear, which is the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supercar 3 and the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supercar 3R, which are Treadwear rating 220 and 100. So now we're all the way up at 300 and all the way down to 100. And then obviously I couldn't do this test without including at least one of the internet's favorite tires. So I've got the Toyo R R, which is also 100 Treadwear rating. The track I'll be using is the fastest track in North America. It's Nelson Ledgers in Ohio. So it should be a really good test of the tire's lateral stability and grip, and also a really good test of my driving. Does lower tread wear mean more track performance? Well, there's only one way to find out properly. Let's go test. Okay. <laughs> if you've watched my GT3 RS video, you'll know at some point there is a limit to me driving quickly and me being able to talk. This track is so fast and this car is so fast. I've done my fast laps and I've got my data and I've got my times, but there was no way I could do that well while talking to you. So I'm having to do things separately again, but this car now, the astute of you will notice this isn't a fifth gen Z28 interior either. Being tall is great for a lot of things, but driving is not one of them. And I couldn't fit in the Z28. If I could get my head comfortable, my leg was wedged between the bucket seat and the steering column. So sadly, I couldn't use that car, but I have this sixth generation ZZ1LE. Anyway, the tires. Started the day with the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. Now this tire, if you'd driven it in isolation with no other tires on this car, I think you'd be reasonably happy with it. Now, Let's not forget the 4S is the most road focused of the tires. It's a Treadwear 280. And again, in isolation, it feels, it feels okay. The front end always feels a bit vague and turning is a little bit slow and the tire seems to take a little bit of time to build slip angle and sit on the sidewall a little bit. And you get that kind of annoying, like first turn, wait, first turn, wait. And it just kind of feels a bit bouncy. Without testing, I can't be sure, but I would put some money on out of the five tires on test, this will be the best in the wear. And I know we're doing a track test and NVH, and which is noise, vibration, and harshness, essentially comfort and noise, isn't really a factor. But even driving from the pits to the track, you could feel this was the most damped tire. So on the road, it would be the most comfortable and the, the most rounded tire, I guess. But on track, because I've driven it against the competitors, you really start to notice where it lacks, and that is in the, the directness of the steering, uh, the speed of the steering. It's quite a light steering tire, and it's quite uh, you need quite a bit of slip angle. And I've said it a thousand times before about the 4S, you just need a bit more on the nose because the overall grip's really good for a road tire, but you just you need that feedback and that ability to know exactly what a tire's doing and correct the car mid corner to really give you that confidence. Moving to the Supercar 3, the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supercar 3. Now we don't get this tire in Europe, uh, so it's my first time driving it. And oh, I'm impressed. It doesn't feel like it sits in the same category as the 4S. It feels like it, it, it isn't a track tire because it doesn't have the wet disadvantage as far as I'm aware, I need to test this. This is a test for another day. But as far as I'm aware, it doesn't have the wet disadvantage of an extreme track tire, but it has more dry grip than a max performance road tire. So I call these extreme performance tires. This Supercar 3 is just a joy. Moving from the 4S, everything I wanted to be improved with the 4S 
on track, this tire seems to do it. The front end's really darty and direct. The steering's heavier, which if you've watched videos of mine before, you'll know I, I like a tire to have heavier steering. I like it to be direct. I like it to be on the nose. And the lateral grip, as you build up, you can still make adjustments. So it still reacts to what you want it to do, which, I mean, it, it just, it, it, it's a road tire and it feels like every bit as much or every bit as good with this car as a track tire would on track so really impressive for the road tire supercar three so the important lap time well the michelin was a 72 7 8 and this was a second faster at 71 7 7 so it just it gains a little bit everywhere but i think forget the grip forget the improved lap time it's the directness and sharpness that i think you'll really appreciate on the road because on the road you don't push your car to 10 tenths like we are on track but on the road the tires going to make the car feel more alive more direct and more sporty which again is something i really value in a tire i know some people would prefer comfort and whatever the advantages of the michelin have full test coming soon i'm sure but this supercar three is just it, it makes the car feel alive which i love moving on to the cup two now the cup two is michelin's track tire and the steering while it is a little bit lighter than the supercar three it's still a very nice tire to steer it feels really good on the front it feels direct and at lower speeds you just it, it just feels it feels balanced the cars the front end places where you want it to which is wonderful it's the cup two everyone loves the cup two however as things start to speed up and you start building up forces again you just start pushing into a little bit more understeer but it's just frustrating it's you're kind of waiting on the front more than anything else traction feels great the back's planted and the occasional slide it, it's it's controllable but it's just that front axle authority is lacking so the car really does understeer and understeer and again like the 4s you're kind of making small adjustments the whole time the time is quicker than the supercar 3 but it's only by about half a second so the gap between the 4s and the supercar 3 is larger both in time and sort of handling subjective feel than it is between the supercar 3 and the cup 2 which i found really interesting now moving to the supercar 3r now i'm not sure where this tire would sit compared to the cup 2 in the wet again hopefully that will be tested at some point but let me tell you in the dry it's a better tire immediately you notice the slightly heavier steering which is always a joy i've said this earlier i really like heavier steering but you get so much more grip with it the brakes feel more immediate the turning feels really really good and then when the car's loaded up laterally like it is now especially in the long sweepers you have at this circuit it just holds on and on and then you start squeezing the throttle a little bit more because you realize you've got more grip and you go and go and go and then you realize actually you've got more grip you might be wanting to adjust your line and you can still adjust your line mid corner even with all that grip and it really really hangs on it's super impressive it's the fastest of the four so far and probably my favorite subjectively because it's just darty it's predictable there's loads of traction there it gives you all the confidence in the world to really push on and it's just i, I know i bleat on about it. it's the heavier steering the more direct steering and the ability to just adjust the car mid corner but it's yeah great tire good year you've done a great job and the final tire the toyo r r now i have tasted the r before nothing from memory different car different track different time but from memory nothing really seems to have changed sure the tread pan has but the way the tire performs i still don't get why the internet loved this tire so much it's okay 80 percent. okay i take that back at 80 percent driving if you're driving on the road or if you're not the best driver in the world and want to go around a track and have like a sporty feel the r r is great because it's direct on the front axle it's a nicely weighted steering and below the limit well below the limit it's a it's a good tire like if you're not pushing hard it's a good tire but it's a track tire it's not designed to be driven below the limit it's designed to be driven at and past the limit and that's where it all just starts to go wrong i mean this <laughs> this camaro 
ended up having both oversteer and understeer at the same time. It felt like the tire was sitting on the track, not, not keying into the track. Really, really curious. When it switched to understeer, which it did quite a lot, it, it didn't really give you much notice and you found yourself like you turn in on the brakes, pick up the throttle as you would with any of the other four tires and all of a sudden you'd be shooting off understeering and you'd really have to like work the car back instead of going onto the grass and the tire walls which are very close here at this circuit. When it oversteered, it oversteered very quickly so you were snap oversteer so it was a turn easing on the throttle as you would of any of the other tires and then it would kick out and you'd, you'd really have to be sharp which the this is the only tire where I had a oh, moment and it it, it makes <laughs> it's strange. it makes a really strange sound at speed it sounds like you've got a jet engine because it's going or there's an air raid siren and then when it's chirping in the corner it just makes an it makes a really odd sound so I know I'm being negative about this tire again please don't Please don't get too angry, but if it was quick, if it's quick, we can we can balance it out. But it's not. Two seconds a lap slower than the 3R, um, and not that much faster than the 4S. So we started the day trying to answer: Does lower tread wear number mean more grip on track? And it was all going so well till we got to the Toyo, because that's a Treadwear 100 tire and it was barely faster than the Treadwear 300 Michelin. I think the more important thing to take from this, at least for me, is Treadwear doesn't make for driving enjoyment. Now, I don't think we can think bad of the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S for being the least dynamic. It is the most road focused and I'm sure it's the most comfortable tire. And I do want to test it because I've not seen it tested, but I've got a feeling it's going to have the edge in the wet as well over all the other tires. But that Supercar 3, and the Supercar 3R, let's, let's forget the Supercar 3R. It was mega impressive, but it's a 100 Treadwear rating track tire. It's meant to be mega impressive. I'm not sure what was wrong with that Toyo and that car combination, but it just didn't work. So let's put that aside, because I've talked about that already. I think the hero for me is the Supercar 3. Now this is what I've been trying to get tire manufacturers to make. It's not quite a max performance summer tire like the 4S, but it's not quite a track tire. It kind of sits in this middle, which tire rack in the US are calling extreme performance, and that's what I'm calling it as well. It's a tire that brings you driving enjoyment. And it's not about the grip, which was mega impressive. It's about the steering precision, feel, and confidence you get from the tire and car package. And to me, that's more important than ultimate lap time, more important than anything else. I just want, for a car like this, or like my M3 back at home, I want a tire that makes the car feel special. And that's what the Supercar 3 did. So that is my Treadwear conclusion. Forget the Treadwear and just think about driving enjoyment if you're not racing. And then if you are racing, forget the Treadwear and work out what's best and what's fastest from either tire tests like on tire reviews or tire tests from around the world or speak to the people in your category and find out what tire everyone else is using because that might be best. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Lots more content coming soon, both in track and on road and in snow and in the summer and in the winter. It's gonna be a really good year for tires. Any questions, do ask below. I'll try my best to answer everything. Thanks again to Goodyear for letting me use their car and helping me with wheel changes and tires and everything like that. Really appreciate the support. And as always, safe motoring. If, like me, you spend a lot of time traveling connected to various random public Wi-Fi's, keeping your data secure is a real concern, which is why this video sponsor, NordVPN, is the perfect companion for your laptop, smartphone, tablet, or more. A VPN is a piece of software that encrypts your data between your laptop and the World Wide Web, meaning no one else can see your data, and a VPN can make you appear as if you're in a different country if you're missing that home streaming service while you're away on a job. As a huge tech geek, I did my research into what VPN I want to use, and luckily for me, NordVPN aligns with exactly what I want. They are tested as the fastest VPN, which is mega important when you're trying to move big files for YouTube. They use diskless servers to ensure security, and they don't throttle your data at any point. If all that sounds really complicated, don't worry, it's not. The app is as simple as one click on your smartphone, tablet, laptop, anywhere, and it secures your data instantly. I've now been using NordVPN for a couple of months whenever I've been away from home on my laptop, and the service has been flawless.
You can currently buy NordVPN from as little as $3.56 a month using the link in the description. So I thoroughly recommend you check them out now and use the coupon code TARREVIEWS for your discount.